close to 60% of all active listings in Toronto are tenanted or vacant. And what that means is over half of the available inventory on the market right now in the city of Toronto is owned by investors. And what that tells me is that investors are struggling to hold their real estate. And many people watching this video may think that's a great thing because investors are in a pinch, but more than just the investor is having a bad time right now. My name is McCallum, and I'm a real estate agent and team leader in the city of Toronto. And if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me, go to the first link in the description of this video to book a meeting with me. And don't forget to hit both the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy my real estate videos. Taking just two seconds to like and subscribe really helps get my content in front of other people like yourself looking to learn more about the Canadian and Toronto real estate markets. And what amazes me is that only 12% of you are subscribed. So hit that subscribe button and join our growing YouTube community. And if you're a landlord in the marketplace right now, let us know in the comments if you're heavily weighing the options of holding on to your real estate or if we've reached a point where it makes more sense to sell. Because we've spoken to many landlords who are very much considering selling if we see more rate hikes before mid-2024. Getting back to the actual topic here, investors are hurting in this market. Variable rates have risen astronomically over the past year and a half. And if a landlord held a variable rate mortgage and was barely breaking even, which most landlords don't break even in Toronto, then the cost to actually service that product, the home, is becoming too difficult financially. A landlord may be collecting $2,500 a month from their tenant, and before rates went sky high, the landlord was breaking even. But now that their monthly payment has changed and has risen by, let's realistically say, $1,500 a month, that landlord is now $1,500 cash flow negative. And it's a similar situation for landlords who have held fixed rate mortgages, because although those rates haven't increased when the Bank of Canada increases the overnight lending rate, the landlord still needs to renew their mortgage after their term, which isn't going to look very pretty on paper. A landlord paying 3% five years ago is now looking at a mortgage of 55 or 6%, which is going to increase their monthly payments. And if they were just breaking even at 3%, they sure as hell won't be breaking even at 6%. If the cost becomes too much to bear, a real estate investor may decide to cut their losses and sell their investment, or even investments, plural. But that causes a ripple effect, which directly impacts the rental market. And if you remember one of the first things I mentioned in this video, the landlord is not the only person who's struggling. It's also the tenant as a result of the landlord's sale. Now, the landlord may sell their property to another investor who retains the tenant, but that's not always the case. An end user or someone who wants to live in the property may purchase the home and take vacant possession of the property, meaning the tenant who is living in the home has to find a new place to live. And that tenant is likely going to be looking at rent, which is higher than they're currently paying, especially if they've been in the property for a few years. And even more so if they've been living in a rent controlled building for a long time. So not only are landlords struggling, but it's also the tenants at honestly no fault of their own. And I'm seeing this all the time and it's horrible. We're receiving a lot of inquiries from tenants and when we ask them why they're moving, that's their answer. This next point here is pretty crazy to see. If we take a look at the number of tenanted properties currently listed, it's just under 2,000 in the city of Toronto, which we've already determined. And according to StatCan and CBC, 21.7% of Toronto homes are owned by investors. So if we take that number and assume that of the 2,000 tenanted properties currently listed, 20% for even numbers are purchased by investors and 80% are purchased by end users. That would mean that 1,600 tenants would be on the hunt for a new home because an end user would be purchasing that piece of real estate, assuming all 2,000 of the listings are sold. And that right there is really scary to me. To think that 1,600 tenants have the potential of being displaced from their home. And I think that's one of the more incredible benefits of owning real estate that isn't talked about enough. Knowing that if you make the payments, no one's kicking you out of your home. I think we should also take a look at not just the active listings, but the number of new listings. So these numbers here are just for the month of October from 2018 to 2023. 
In October of 2018, there were just under 5,500 new listings to hit the market. And of those, 2,338 were investor-owned, making 42% of new listings to hit the market in October of 2018 investor-owned. And that percentage is climbing pretty darn quick because we now sit at 51% of new listings in October 2023 being investor-owned. The number of investor-owned new listings is definitely increasing, but it isn't at 2020 levels quite yet. And an unintended data point I found when compiling these numbers is that in October of 2020, we saw 8,012 new listings hit the MLS. And in October of 2023, we've only seen 5,732, which is interesting because based on how the market is performing, I would have thought our number of new listings would have been closer to 6,300 or 6,500. Next week, we'll have a full video out on the current state of the Toronto real estate market. So make sure you click subscribe.